welcome back to another episode of the Chemisinet podcast. Today it is Thursday, February 22nd, and I am being good today as well, filming it in advance. Um, today it is a very boring <laughs> day in Denmark. Uh, it's uh, it's really foggy outside and wet, but um, the there's no wind, so at least that's the let's focus on the good part. Um, today I'm here, starting here back at the uh, office. I am turning uh, another way. Today I'm still experimenting a little bit, trying to find good angles, and uh, I even put flowers back there. But I can tell that I am sitting in front of them. So who cares about that? Maybe I can twist this a little bit. Yes? No? <laughs> like that. That's fine. Okay. So you can tell I have some flowers back there and the chemistry design that Lars gave me for my birthday. Anyway, welcome to another episode. I have a, a long list of things to talk to you about today. And I think also this episode we will end up in the studio because I have been dyeing some new colorways that I am so excited to show and share with you. And um, instead of me bringing all the yarn back to the house, it's just so much easier to bring you to the studio. So that is the plan um, for today. So welcome, my name is Camilla. I live here in Denmark with my husband and our two girls that are almost adults. And uh, our golden retriever, Teddy, he's laying right here on the floor. And uh, yeah, 2024 is uh, so far a pretty good year for Camilla Knit. I have had time to dye lots and lots of yarn. And since I just got a new base, um, replacing my old Camilla sock base, it has been so nice to have so much dyeing time so I can dye up my new base in all the colors. <laughs> so yeah, welcome. I um, think I'll start out just by what is on my needles. First project on my needle. <clears throat> it's very hard to see anything. I just cast it on sock number two in my Camejo sock. Yak base. This is the sweet swirl in the old version. And I finished the first, well, I didn't finish the first socks actually because I did not pick up stitches for my heel flap just yet. But um, these are my on the go socks and I am in no hurry to complete them. Uh, except that I have a knitting festival in March on the 16th in Weile, which is the Fieber Folk uh, Knitting and Wool Festival. And it's just great to have a, at least this one sock ready, so people can kind of feel the new base. So that is one project. <clears throat> Second project. Um, last week, I apologize for being a week late, but last week was winter break here in Denmark. So Esther didn't have to go to school for a whole week. Of course, Nomi is home anyway. And Lars is out, so me and my friend Mette and the girls who went to the summer house for four days. And I actually felt like doing a vlog from there, but then at the same time, it's just nice to sometimes just, just really have four days of vacation. I haven't had vacation since Christmas, so. Uh, great. So, before we went to the summer house, Esther was at the studio with me, and she was like, um, maybe you should knit something for me, mom. <laughs> and I was like, okay, so what do you want? And she's like, indecisive. And she said, well, I want... Yeah, I really, she was going through all my patterns and I have this book at the place and she's like, yeah, I want the melancholy sweater. That's really nice. So that's what I did. If you follow me on Instagram, you have uh, seen the um, beginning of this melancholy and I am knitting in the elephant cutaway uh, in the merino sack base and the silk mohair base. And I have just dyed plenty of these and uh, they are dry. I skeined them. No, I didn't skein them. I twisted them yesterday. So they will be labeled today or tomorrow and they'll be in the, sh in the shop. I did them on the gold stock as well. I will show you when we get to the, to the studio. I can, I can show you how many I did, but, uh, this is just, uh, ribbing. I actually have one, uh, Maybe you've seen this before. This is my version of the melancholy sweater in the in a blue glitter yarn. It's one of my favorite sweaters. It's getting a little too big for me, but uh, 
see, I love this color. Um, and you can actually tell the sparkle, but it's uh, way too warm. Anyway, I just wanted to show you the, the sweater, the finished, finished sweater. So this is um, Melancholy, and uh, Esther loves this uh, elephant colorway. She did, uh, during Christmas, she did the Sophie scarf in this colorway in my Alpaca Deluxe base, which was just the perfect yarn for that little cute show that everyone is wearing. <laughs> and uh, I also designed a scarf, uh, shown before. This is in my Merino, Merino mohair base, which is like a single ply yarn. I think I just call it Mimo. <laughs> um, and uh, I just dyed the last skeins that I have of this yarn, which is the yeah single single ply yarn in in mohair and merino, and I just put them online. So I have eight left, and once they're gone, they're gone forever. I can't have all the bases, <laughs> but it's just to show you the same colorway that she really loves this color, and uh, I did too. So in the evenings, I am working on her melancholy sweater and. Uh, it's just such a relaxing knit. Uh, I don't mind the ribbing. It's just a three by one ribbing and I don't mind that at all. And I just want to share a little tip with you because when you, um, sorry, my hair just got a little messed up. When you dye, no, <laughs> when you knit with hand dyed yarn and you're going to knit a sweater like this, you cannot just take the skeins and just complete one skein and then add the next and then just complete that and then add the next. You will risk having blocks of different shades of the same color. So even though they have been in the same dye bath and even though you think they look alike, <laughs> there is always a risk of that tiny difference or at least in some of them you can tell here at the turtleneck, you can tell that there is a little shade difference. And that's fine. And but if you use one skein, then this shading will have like one um, one look. And then when you change the skein, it might be different. So you can tell that you have changed the yarn, even though the color is the same. So I did the whole turtleneck using once the first skein until around here, and then I added my new skein. And I'll just knit two rows with one and two rows with the other until I run out of this one. And then I have decided to just keep with the silk mohair and just change that. But as long as you have your yarns kind of circulating or changing every other row or whatever system you make, just don't do three blocks. I did that with my first melancholy sweater that I did in a, like a raspberry pink because I was lazy and uh, I just regret that a million times because with the first two skeins, you really didn't couldn't tell any difference. But with the last one, it was just a, like just a touch darker. And you really can't tell when the skeins are next to each other, but you can totally tell this one bottom block of my melancholy sweater just has a different shape. So that is um, my advice always. And also because when it comes to hand dyed yarn, we don't do dye lots. So if you order five skeins of elephant, I would cannot promise you they have been in the same dye bath. I have uh, five yarns in a pan, and if I dye 15 or 20, there'll be five in each pan, and they will be twisted at the same time and labeled, and they can be in different dye baths, even though they were dyed at the same time. And even though they have the exact same amount of dye, hand dyed yarn is just not commercial yarn, and the, the way it's dyed and the whole process, that is what it makes the yarn beautiful and unique, but that is also why it's so extremely important that you interchange your yarns when you do, especially sweaters. I think with shawls, maybe I wouldn't, really wouldn't care that much, but with, um, but with a sweater like this, it just kind of ruins the whole thing. You spend so much money on hand dye yarn, so you want to get the best result possible, interchange your yarns like I do. <laughs> so that was a little teaching from the teacher. <laughs> um, I also have a finished object. 
it's a brand new design. So the last time I showed you a little knitting knit, knitted sample, a little swatch from um, that I did in my Mega Mohair. I just did a swatch to do kind of like gauge. And uh, Esther and I had this idea for a very cool, hip, young <laughs> um, sweater that was just totally easy to knit and fast. I did this on a 10 millimeter needle. I think that's a US 15, correct me if I'm wrong or look it up if you're not sure. <laughs> and uh, this is the result. Uh, this is a size, I have divided these into three sizes. So this is, this sweater covers extra small to medium and then it'll be ex large to extra, extra large. And then I have uh, the biggest version is like 3XL to 5XL. <clears throat> And I can put a picture of Esther here because when we went to the summer house, I took some picture of pictures of her last Saturday and it was sunny outside. And I said, please, can we go to the beach and take some pictures? And she's like, okay, whatever. And um, yeah, so you just pick up stitches for the sleeves. Uh, it's a pretty, it's a pretty easy knit. It took me like a week. And uh, Tina, my friend and partner in crime that I uh, share the studio space with she's um working on her version right now in a hunter green and white and i'm i'm picking her up later and she will go with me to the studio and um hopefully she brought that project because then i can uh, show you her progress and yeah maybe we can have a little chat lisa uh, lisa tina <laughs> I have another friend called Lisa. I don't know why I mix those up. Um, anyway, Tina just had surgery last week on her foot, so she can't really work at all. But um, I know she's she's just one of those people, you know. She has too much energy that just sitting at home in her couch. Her husband dropped her off the um, the studio the other day and said, "I can't take it anymore. <laughs> Please, could you babysit her for a couple of hours?" Tina has a lot of energy, and she needs to get energy up. So um, we have decided just to hang out at the studio today i will be working and i don't know what tina will be doing probably just drink tea and uh, talk a lot and disturb me while i'm working but anyway she's doing um her version in another color and Nomi wants one as well and she wants a green and beige i just dyed a new green for her because she didn't want the hunter green she thought that was too dark so we dyed up a new brand new colorway it's actually called fern forest uh i just dyed it on a silk mohair I think it's gorgeous green. I have had people say, Kemi Jo, you have not enough green. Or well, they don't say Kemi Jo. They just say Camilla or actually some people call me Kemi Jo, but um, that is not funny. But anyway, <laughs> they, I have been requested to do more greens. So um, I'm trying and uh, I'm liking it. And I need to get back to also dyeing more blues, actually. Well, if you are interested in testing uh, the Mega Mohair, uh, no, I call it Mega Stripe, the Mega Stripe cardigan. If you're interested in testing, um, send me an email um, to, um, I just had a new email address made for testers. <laughs> I will look that up, but I think it's testknitter.com. I will put that down here. And I will put it down in the show notes so you know exactly what email to email. But I'm 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 trying to organize my email system because until now I just got everything in the same box and that was just that was just a nightmare. So now I am trying to kind of divide those <laughs> into mailboxes. So test knitter at camjanet.com, I think. Anyways. That was my uh, mega stripe. I think I will knit one for myself as well once I have decided on the colors. I really like the summer colors for this. Um, I think even though it is a really chunky sweater, I think it has this summer evening vibe. Um, so yeah. Anyways, uh, next. My Easter box is ready for pre-order. I'm very excited about the Easter box. It's my one of my favorite boxes of the year to dye. I have a thing for Easter. I love Easter eggs. I love uh, the pastels. I love as a kid to go Easter egg hunting. I love the Easter lunch in the family where everyone has way too much beer and snaps and delicious lunch. 
and usually um, Easter here also means the the beginning of the warmer days so usually we'll have the first Easter beer outside on the on the deck or on the terrace depending on where we are and uh, that first beer outside in the sun is just brilliant sometimes we have that first beer even though it's snowing because it's a tradition we have the first Easter beer outside no matter what the weather is like and sometimes it's sunny and sometimes it's snow but um, yeah, I'm very excited about the Easter box. I will start dyeing that next week, I think. <laughs> so we can have that out by, I don't know, March 1st or something like that, or just after that weekend. And if you want to have uh, the mushroom of March sent with your Easter egg box, that is, um, that is perfect. You can totally have that. So uh, you just put in the notes. The best thing is that you put that in the note of both of your orders. You just uh, choose pick up for one order and then you pay for shipping on the other order and just let me know. Ship these together, please. <laughs> and I will do that. That's absolutely no problem. Um, <clears throat> Mushroom of the month will open, pre orders will open on March 1st at 9, 9 a.m., 10 a.m., 9 a.m. March 1st, 9 a.m. If you subscribe to my newsletter, you will get a newsletter at that exact time, so you can pre-order your mushroom. Um, yes, that's all for the mushrooms. I'm so excited about this mushroom. I'm so excited about this mushroom. Let's just say that um, since Easter is in March, I chose a mushroom inspired by Easter. Then that's all I have to say about that. Um, I have got new merch and some of you might have seen that I have a Chemisonit t-shirt um, that I, I, I put that in a story and I forgot to share it here on the podcast and I have them at the studio so I will show you once I get to the studio. I am, I actually just got these Chemisonit t-shirts for friends and family so whenever they help me out somewhere they can have a t-shirt with my logo and also just for you know fun and for me and for working. And when Esther is at the studio, she can wear her t-shirts and she looks like she's working there <laughs> and, uh, and uh, she doesn't have to ruin her own clothes because when she's washing all the pans, sometimes she gets dye on her clothes. Then another thing, and I need your uh, opinion on this one, uh, because I had this, I had this bag made. This is uh, one side and I did um, watercolor all these feathers and then I um had them printed on this like a huge it's like a big tote bag i love the size of it and on the other side it actually has a fade of chemistry you can see the top one is just too pale so you really can't tell and then the other two so would you be interested in tote bags like this because i'm debating whether i should get these printed for people to buy and what would you prefer because I'm not gonna have um, prints on both sides, this is too expensive. But I could either do, I like this one the best, but as my one of my friends said, why the feathers? Because you are a yarn dyeing business, you do not, why the feathers? So I thought of, instead of the feathers, I also hand dye, no, I also watercolor some uh, skeins of yarn. And it could be fun to just have yarn skeins here instead of feathers. Let me know what you think. Do you like the feathers? Would you like yarn? Or do you prefer the back side? That's three options. And um, yeah, I also think when I go to festivals and stuff like that, it'll be fun to have these bags so people can have one of these when they buy yarn. Or they can buy one because it's too they're too expensive to print and to just give away but uh i just thought it would be nice to have something i even did an experiment on like these small ones here but i'm not too sure what i think about them i think actually they are a little bit too big and i think that the feeling of it is a little bit too soft so i'm not sure i'm gonna go with that but i'm definitely going with the tote bag let me know what you think about that. And the t-shirts. So uh, uh, a friend of mine, 
another uh, podcaster, she said, oh, you got t-shirts. I would love to buy one. And I really didn't intend for them to be like available for sale online. I just intended them to be for yeah people working at my business or yeah, you know, just friends and family who thought it could be fun to have my logo on the t-shirt. But if you're interested in that, I could next time I print some, I can have extra printed and I could have them in the shop. And I don't need to be making a lot of money, so I just really need to get my expenses um, covered and uh, a little bit more, of course, because um, if I don't sell all of it, it I don't want to waste money. But um, it's not like I need to make a huge profit on those. So let me know if you think that could be something fun to have comes in the t-shirts as well. Um, next weekend on March 1st and March 2nd, my studio will be open for visitors or Tina's and I, <laughs> Tina's and mine studio, uh, me and Tina's studio will be open on Friday from one to five and on Saturday from nine to one. So if you live in the neighborhood <laughs> or if you don't live in the neighborhood, but you don't mind driving. And if I could just have all of you from overseas and from all over Europe and the United States, and I have viewers from all over the world, Australia, Japan, wouldn't it just be so, would love it if you could all come over. Uh, if any of you are ever in Denmark for holiday and my studio is not open the day, please just let me know if you are in the country. I will be more than happy to show you around the studio uh, and say hello. That would be awesome. Um, the last episode I talked to you about Nancy's um, sock pattern that she did in my colorway Nyo and she calls this, she named her sock pattern after the, that colorway, so they're called Nyo socks. And I have two winners. And I will put your names here on the screen because uh, Katie Bell and Ruth Swartzhout. <laughs> I'll put your names here and you don't have to contact me. You just contact Nancy at her Ravelry page. Uh, I will make sure to provide her information down in the show notes. And you can just write Nancy and say that you want a pattern uh, from my podcast and she will send you the um, pattern through Ravelry. Uh, so that is that is how easy it is. And... I think that's all I have to say. I can show you the mushrooms from the previous months. This was January. I chose the gold Stellina kind because I can't help it. I love um, gold Stellina. And this was February. And I haven't casted on anything. I still, I'm, I'm, I really can't decide if I just want to keep them. And then at the end of the year, I can show <laughs> all 12. But then at the same time, the mushroom I just died, I am dying to cast that one on. Cast, cast that one on. Because I really, I am loving how it turned out. I did a pre, I did already um, dye some of them. So I know what it's going to look like and it is looking very good. Well, I think that is uh, all for now here in the studio. I will be uh, cleaning up a little bit and then I will pick up Tina. She's at the, she's at the hair salon and she can't drive because she has uh, this huge um what is that called a cask on her leg so she can't walk or drive or anything she's really handicapped it's funny because no it's not funny but both her and nomi are on crutches because they nomi's uh, knee and tina's foot so i am surrounded by people that can't walk <laughs> but that's fine so once i pick up tina I will take you with me to the studio, talk about the new yarn and have a little chat with Tina and see what is going on. She has done some the cutest Easter eggs and I would have loved to add those to the Easter egg box, but I didn't I didn't get around to talk to Tina before I did it. So if you if you want to if you have already um, ordered the Easter box from me and you want one of Tina's eggs as soon as you put them online, we can ship them together just you just let Tina know that shipping that she doesn't have to ship them. Just put them in my package. That is no problem. So, but I will show you those eggs that she made. They are so pretty. Um, yep, that's it. I'll grab some lunch before we go, and I'll see you at the studio. I forgot to share what I was wearing, and I know people are gonna ask me, so I'm just gonna uh, be good about that. I am wearing my Candy Cloud cardigan this is the second version i did i uh, did this last summer in all the all the 
warm colors, all the yellows and apricots and pinks and purples. And uh, some people ask me, I want to know exactly what yarns you use. Please guys, don't be so afraid. Just take the shades of silk mohair that you like and put them together and I promise you everything will be fine. I did not make a plan when I started this. I just took four strands of mohair that I thought looked good together and I started to knit. And then I will break one and add another one. And if I don't like it, I will rip it back, which has never happened. And then I'll just, as soon as you, or as long as you have a basket of the colors you think look pretty together, it cannot go wrong. Don't overthink it. Just do it. And uh, I promise you, it will look good. I went for like a peachy yellow look for this one. And see, even now and then I have some really deep purple stripes and it doesn't matter. They look good anyway. So anyway, that was, <laughs> that was just a little bonus info. See you at the studio. Cheers, Tina. Cheers. I'll be there. We have to talk merch today. And this is some of our merch. Yeah. It was actually a present I got for Tina a while back. Yeah, and I'm very pleased. Yes. So uh, you're That's so good. good. You better be grateful. Yeah, I am very grateful. We are at the studio. We have arranged a little bit for the background because uh, it really wasn't the perfect spot to be filming because everything up here is really ugly. At least the walls are pretty ugly, but what is on the table always look good. No, the walls are a little bit ugly because they're made of iron, but the, the tables are usually pretty nice looking because we have all the craft going on. I have uh, not invited Tina because she actually works here, but <laughs> I have asked her to join the podcast today because first I want to show you some of the new colors that I just dyed. And then one of the colors, Tina is actually working the Mega Stripe uh, sweater. So I was asking her if she would share her progress and she said yes. Um, but before we do that, I'll just show you really quick some of the new colors. Um, we can start with Hunter. You know the colorway, I've had that before. This is the first time I dyed it on the Mega Mohair. Actually first because my oldest wanted to do the Mega Stripe in this color, but then she changed her mind. She wanted another kind of green. So I made her this green, which I call Fern Forest. Um, and then because Pentone, they, they do like color of the year every year. And this year they have named peach fuzz color of the year. And I am in love with peach. So I did so this. Nice. Isn't it pretty? Yeah, it is. I have sent some of these in this colorway to Yeti. She is, uh, Yeti is one of my angels. She will knit whatever I tell her to knit. She'll knit it for me. And she knits fast and really good. So I have sent her four skeins of this and she'll do the diamonds sweater. So I'm really excited to see that. She said she will bring it for the fiber festival in March. So that's very soon. So I hope she doesn't get too stressed <laughs> for it. It's not a deadline. She, she just said she'll bring it. And then I made the Singapore sling. I haven't had that for a while. I did that also in the silk my hair. I'm also in love with that one. I, really I am nice. too. <clears throat> the combination of pink and peach and yellow, I think is just and it's actually not my colors normally, but I really think this is a really nice one. Yeah, me too. It's really summer. Yeah. It's all the dahlias in the, <laughs> yeah, in yeah, the garden. Right. Then I did, uh, maybe this is more like a fold then, because I did That's this one. That's more my colors, That's, actually. Yeah. <laughs> They're just so muted and faded, and I call it faded hydrangea. I don't know how to, I don't know how to pronounce that. But um, yeah, I was playing around with colors, and uh, I think this turned out pretty good. I also did a very springy one. I call this one Crocus or Crocus. I don't know how you pronounce that. I have had that color before, but not on the silk mohair. I don't think, at least I don't think so. I played with assigned pooling, which is a new thing. Um, I have talked about this technique before that it's always something that I try to avoid having the yarn doing like a massive pooling like this, but uh, it was just fun to play around with this technique and you can see it kind of totally matches the color of my logo yeah. peach and marine or navy blue so that's a new one then I did some of the old colors that I've had all the time but finally they are on my Kamaja Sak Yak Bay so it's cinnamon spice happy hunter and coquinas and then this funny one nebula 
I was playing around with colors last week and I was asking on Instagram, what color do you think I need? And Marie said purple. So I came up with this one. I call it Nebula because there's this thing in the in between the stars called a Nebula. I don't know exactly what it is. It's like a star thing. And it's also, she's also a, a character in Marvel, in the Marvel universe. I think that was roughly the colors for that are new for now. I have new colors as well downstairs. I just want to say one more time, the elephant colorway I did on multiple bases. I did it on the Yak, Kemja Sak Yak base, the Merino Sak base, the gold and silk mohair. So I think I have it actually that color on all my bases now, except for the makeup mohair. Yeah, you should do that too. I should do that too. <laughs> <laughs> we both really love the elephant colorway. Okay, so let's see your uh, project, Tina. Yes, I will find it here. And I'm not that an experienced knitter. I've knit, a, I've knit a lot when I was a teenager, and then I stopped uh, again. Mm. But now I started again because I get inspired by all this lovely yarn that I am surrounded about <laughs> with all the time. Um, and then you made your uh, mega stripe mohair sweater for Esther, and that was pink. Oh. Yeah. The one for Esther is in Come on Barbie, Let's Go Party and yeah. Distant Undyne. Yeah, so that's also very, very nice. Yeah. But then you showed me that, what's called Hunter? Hunter. Yeah. And my husband is a hunter. Uh, and I really fi think that's a nice color too. So I've started that with these two colors. They look beautiful together. And I've started, when did I start? I start the, the day, day before, before yesterday. Yeah. So what is it today? Thursday, yeah, Tuesday. I started around nine o'clock in the evening. Yeah. Da, 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 da. Yes, I made this progress uh, so far. So I'm more than halfway through the, uh, what's called the main the path, body. Mm. body. Yeah. And I think it looks really, really nice. It looks nice. so good. Yeah. I think that dark green with the yeah. white is just yeah. really pretty. So I um, really look forward and it's super easy to, uh, to, to knit and uh, pretty fast uh, on the yeah, number it's a 10. 10 millimeter needle. Yeah. yeah, it's a US 15. Yeah, so that's um, so I love it. Um, yeah, I did my I made a challenge. I just finished uh, a sweater that I started three years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! <laughs> that's how long it takes me to do a blanket or yeah. something. Um, and it's not that, that I've yeah, I knitted on it for three years, no. but it's just <laughs> been uh, sent to the corner for a couple but of you've been knitting and then ribbing back a little bit and yeah. then knitting again. Yeah, and then it was then it was it was a winter sweater, so it's a kind of then the summer came and okay, no yeah. need for to finish that now. So now I've gave myself given myself self this challenge. Maybe I can do this in three days instead of three years, uh, or I will go with three weeks. Uh, that's also okay. Yeah. If I don't make it, I, have I to think be. it'll take you less than three weeks. Yeah. I think like one week. Yeah. It took me so one week. Yeah. That's also because right now I have time, because I sit home a lot. Yes. In my couch with my leg. In she a had surgery in her. Is it your ankle? Yeah, actually? it's my ankle. Yeah, my ankle. Yeah. She was falling all the time. That's yeah. what happens when people get older. Yeah. Fall. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've twisted my ankle. I don't know, have you told about it? No, I just no. said that you had surgery. I didn't explain yeah. no. actually no. why. I've been, uh, it's an old injury from a football game when I was, a soccer game I was playing when I was young. And then I twisted my ankle and then I think I've done it like 13 times, oh, yeah. 30 times since then. So my family has picked me up many times from the ground. So you just fall, like yeah, that, I just out fall of my the blue? Yeah, out of the blue. I started to do that. In the beginning, it was because I, you know, stepped on something, yeah. a, a stone or something like that. But then out of the blue, I've just started to twist it. Um, so it was really not a nice feeling. No. Um, so they have fixed that now. So um, they have uh, tightened me up. <laughs> <laughs> It's a good thing that yeah. they can do that. I think Tighten it's us up. Yeah, I think it's <laughs> called legumens or something like that. Yeah, in, in that English. sounds right. Yeah, yeah. In, in English. Um, so yeah. So, but that means that I have to have my foot in a cast for six weeks, and it's actually a pretty big cast up, up to my knee, uh, up to my knee, and uh, yeah. So that's. Um, I'm really not very mobile at the moment. I said in, when I was recording at home, I said that you are a very energetic person so for you to stay at home with the couch was really a, yeah. really a challenge for you yes. and that your husband came the other day <laughs> and said now she's yours for yeah. a little while. Yeah. 
Yes, so it was really <laughs> nice to come out, and uh, I think now I can, I can. There's definitely progress today. It was one and a half week ago, so I think I covered more days than I, than I can, than it's easier. Uh, I can tell that just from the other day and now. Yeah. Now you can kind of walk a little bit around yeah. without your crutches. Yeah. So that's that's yeah. really yes. But it is really great. it is uh, annoying to only have <coughs> one and a half leg. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, the good thing is she doesn't have to go to her real job, so she no. can actually spend some time here without yeah. having meetings all the time. When yeah, so that's uh, that's yeah. nice. So, my knitting project it will turn out really great, I think. And Tina has promised to model for me. Yeah, yeah, I'll do that. <laughs> of course. <laughs> I don't think short people get asked a lot to be models. No. <laughs> can I model, please? Can I model, please? <laughs> So uh, yeah, no. So uh, and then my next project because I actually am in, I am in love with this Singapore sling. That's also the mega mohair. So I think I'll make a summer edition as well with the white one. With the white one um, as well because mm. I think I have maybe leftovers for almost one more. Yeah, uh, you only need a skein and a half of each yeah. color, so you can. Yeah. So I will do a summer edition too. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah. So Nomi wants one as well. Nomi is my oldest. She's twenty. She wanted a greener version than the hunter green, but she wanted it combined with this beige. Yeah, that's also So nice. that's also very nice. Yeah. I think these two colors go really well together. I also think that green and peach looks good. Yeah. So you can combine. I just brought some of the Mega Mo hairs. I have so many different colors, but um, yeah. I think this could I was also thinking this. about these yeah, two. They I look like good those as well. as well. I like that kind of yeah. yeah. mustard. Yeah. But you can, yeah, you can do a Color. lot of uh, It's also cute just with base and Yeah, white. that's, also, that's also very yeah. cute. A lot of options. A lot of options. And have you uh, published the uh, no, design no, yet? It's not published yet. No. I will mm -hmm. be, I just said earlier that I will be looking for testers to test it and that I'm doing three sizes and they will cover, each size will cover three sizes because it's so oversized. Yeah. It doesn't really, it doesn't really matter if, uh, if it's a little too big. Mm. It's actually pretty wide for yeah. for Elisa. Elisa, I'm not doing it. Tina is making the smallest size, which covers extra small to medium, yeah. and it has a circumference of 120 centimeters. Divide that by four, and you have inches, 30, right? Thirty. Thirty inches. Does it say? Do you remember that from the pattern? In inches? Yeah. No, I don't know. No. I don't know how many inches that is. You can look that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, enough about yarn. I think um, I told you that Tina is making these really pretty um, Easter eggs out of leather, and you can tell that we have some hanging here on my magnolia uh, branches that I stole from our tree at home. Will you explain a yes, little bit about I this, will. Tina? Yes. So these, yeah, these are my Easter eggs, and that's actually a new thing I'm doing this year. Um, I'm made out of, uh, yeah, small leather pieces, uh, leather circles, and I, I glue them on, on this um, uh, styrofoam, styro styrofoam something, uh, egg, um, and then I uh, attach these uh, bows, bows, mm -hmm. mm, bows, bows mm -hmm. yeah. Um, as well, and there's it comes in different colors. Um, so I actually just bought some of this very nice green, and we also have like a it's not a pink, nice. but uh, kind of like a dusty rose, dusty rose, yeah. <coughs> so that's good. And maybe you can take one of those with the, the pink one, the yeah. pink one, yeah. This is my favorite, I think. This one, yeah. So it, it comes in uh, in different colors because the, the leather uh, pieces that I have. Uh, different. Look at uh, this, it's so pretty. Yeah. And you can tell the texture of the leather is different on all these pieces. So you, uh, you kind of take the same color leather, but from different parts of the, of the leather, or is it different pieces that I think it's, yeah, I think it just, it, it's from when, from, from the animal, uh, oh, okay. where, where it's more, which more, uh, there's more, what's it called? Pattern or yeah. uh, um, texture. Texture. <laughs> texture. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> when there's more texture, in it, I think it's because if there's a fold uh, on ah. around the leg. So this or is something still like from the same piece of leather yeah. you're just doing. Okay. Yeah, it, so it, it differs. It differs over yeah. a piece of uh, full skin. Uh, that is fr so from the animal because yeah. it gives <coughs> so much extra to the. Yeah. To um, the so yeah. So okay. that's my uh, new 
thing for the year, uh, an Easter. How yeah. much do they cost? Uh, 100. 100 kroner. Kroners, yeah. So if you want one of these, if you have already bought an Easter egg box with me and you want one of these, you can just go to Tina's web shop. I'll have a link down below. And um, and if you buy one of these, just let Tina know that uh, they're supposed to be in your Easter egg yeah. <laughs> if you ordered one. Yeah. And they will they will be available very soon on my web shop yeah. um, as well. Good. So yes. So if it's not there yet, it will be. It, it will, will be, be available. Yeah, it will be available, and yeah. then I think you can. Yeah, we will make so you can choose the uh, the colors. Uh, there's three, four colors uh, of uh, of ribbon. I can show here. So like. So uh, can they also choose the color of the egg and also the color of yeah, the bowl? Yeah, I think so. Or. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. I have. I'll find out, but you can see on the website yeah, the yeah. website when it comes up uh, how I will organize it um, as well. Maybe I'll choose which one that, uh, that I think fits. Yeah, well because together. sometimes it, you can tell yeah. better which colors yeah. look to yeah. look I think the yeah. best. You will you'll have to take you can you you'll see what what's yeah. done. Yeah, yeah. Ready. yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's that. always good yeah. to make decisions <laughs> yeah. while you're on camera. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah let's. Uh, <laughs> yes, so they will be available um, very soon. I think they are so pretty, and I'm sad that I didn't. Uh, think about this before, yeah, so it okay. could be a part of the. Yeah. Okay. And we do another one. We do another one. Yeah. Um, and then the ribbon is also you can actually see here. It's this. Uh, it's a ribbon made out of pl recycled bottles. So I really like that as well because that fits very well into my whole story and my uh, storytelling strategy. Because all of these leather is also scrap leather, um, as well. From very. Uh, lovely Danish designed furniture. Yeah. It's just not. It's not any kind of leather. It is no. the best. Yeah, it is. It is the best leather. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yes. Well, I guess that was all for now. Um, this is a longer episode because I did thirty minutes already at home. So, um, so this is. I think we'll wrap this up for now. Mm -hmm. But uh, if you enjoyed having a co-star here with me, let us know. And uh, oh yeah, see the merch. Yeah, so nice. You did show the bag, right? The tote I bag. showed the bag. I yeah. showed the tote bag. Yeah. We're having a little vote if they prefer the feathers or if I should do with like yarn, yeah. hand dyed yarn skeins. Yeah. But Camilla is very, very good at those uh, these merch things, and yes. uh, it's just I fun. I think it's so much fun. It is fun. Yeah. It's but fun. thank you for inviting me. Well, you're so welcome. Yeah. So if you w would like to come back, we would love to have you back. I'm always ready. So. Uh, this feels like we're doing a TV show when yeah. we have mugs. <laughs> Cheers guys, see you later. Cheers, see Bye. you. Bye-bye.